All right, so we're gonna about to make some lids, right? So the first thing that we always make first is the body, right? And it has a gallery like this, right? And we'll show, talk to you about how it's made, right? And then, because it's always, you always wanna make the harder thing first, or the thing that has more clay, that we always start with this first, because this has the more clay in it, right? And it's harder to match up. So then we make the smaller thing, and it's easier to make the smaller thing fit. Does that make sense? Because it's just easier, and there's less catastrophe, chance of catastrophe, right? So, so then we'll throw this bowl, shallow bowl, like that, and then what we'll do is next class, we're gonna trim it so that it fits, right? So you can see that and this are exactly the same when you look close. We trim all this off and then we attach a knob on there. So that's what we'll do. And then we'll do this one next like that. So we'll throw two different kinds of lids today. So whenever you're working and making a, um, let me pause that for a second. All right, so whenever you're making or making lids and bodies, always start with one giant piece of clay that you can make all of them out of. This has all been wedged up. I wedged it up really good. So you see that this is way more clay than what I need. So I'm just gonna pull off what I think I need for the body. Why is that? It's because you want your clay at the same wetness and dryness that you don't want them to be different because if they're different wetnesses and drynesses, as they're drying, they will shrink differently that makes sense so we need them to shrink the same ideally so i'm just going to chunk off a piece to make the body right and so that's my bottom maybe add just a little bit more and then the rest of this clay is way more than what i need for lids but that's what i'm starting with i'm throwing on the green bats today because they're a little bit smaller right and i make this into a ball to, Ooh, there we go so there, and then here I'm gonna wet it down and just go through the usual centering and stuff. Let's bump that over a little bit. You guys have a better view of what's going on. There. All right, so here we go. So here, centering just like normal. Right, go up and down. So this clay needs to be really well wedged and it's new clay, like I'm, I don't want to use reclaimed clay. I thought about trying to use reclaimed clay for this, but since I really need these things to work out, I'm going to go with the best clay I got, right? So it's already centered, so I'll push down like that, like that. Then we're ready to do that part. All right, here we go, right? So now it's centered. I'm going to open right down and pull straight back. I'm being conscious of how much clay I'm leaving behind right there, right? Pulling straight back. Okay, good. So we're good. So and I'm going to spend some time smoothing out the bottom. So I'll throw this up into a cylinder. And I this might be the last really good chance I get to look at the bottom here. So I'm spending some time doing that. And then I'm going to raise. So since this is going to be a lid, it's going to be a lidded thing. And it's going to have a gallery, right? So the gallery has to be made out of this clay up here right out of the clay that's on top i need to leave some thickness up here that is the critical moment and why is that because i'm going to take some of that thickness and make it into the gallery if this is all thin up here i have no strength to make a gallery no clay to make a gallery right because i what's really happening is kind of the clay is going up and then the clay is going in at the same time you guys see that at the rim? It's going up here and it's going in. So I need enough clay to create both of those, right? And there's a couple different ways we can do that. But I need to make sure that as I'm throwing, I leave some thickness at the top, right? So I take it easy for thinning out this area right up in here, right? It's always fun to try to get the most out of your clay, right? but sometimes that just doesn't work. You need to take it easy up here. Also, if this gets thin, it's hard to make this round, keep it round, right? Because it will get ovalized. So I, I almost made it too thin up there. Boop, 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 right? So I almost made it too thin. So I need to leave some thickness up here. There's an air bubble right there that I need to pop and, whoa, that's a huge one, All right? Should have popped it earlier. I felt it earlier, but I didn't bother popping it. All right, so right now I'm a little worried that I don't have enough clay to do what I want. So I am going to see if we can do it. It's a little bit thin, a little bit light. 
then I'm going to let up the pressure up here a little, a bunch to keep this area thicker up here because I need some clay left over up here, right? And you see how this is dead round. I need this to be really round up here. That makes sense. So here I'm feeling okay. I'm going to do one more raise here just to see if I can get it a little taller so I have a little bit more clay. Oh, thanks. Yep. I have a little bit more clay there to do my thing. Just a little bit taller. I'm not saying a lot, right? And then up here, I'm going to leave it thicker. Oh, I think this is going to work. And then there's still a, a bubble down there. So I'm going to go back in there and pop it with my needle tool. Bloop. Bloop, bloop. I think that was the top one. All right, so then I'm going to scrape it smooth. So I'm going to take these two ribs, one's on the outside, one's on the inside. Ooh, I got to remove the water off the bottom here. So you can see there's water in there. We're just going to remove that from the inside. There we go. There we go back. So I'm going to use these two ribs and scrape from the inside outside like that and go up and I'm removing all this wet clay and smoothing out those surfaces. Do it again. There we go. There. All right. So now I got it smooth. So now I can start thinking about the form that I want. I think for this one, we're going to bulge out and come back in. I'm thinking that this will be kind of like a teapot form in the end, but we're just using this to make a, a gallery. So I'm just making sure everything's round, nice and tidy. I'm taking off all that wet slip. There's a little bit of water down there still that we're just going to remove. All right, so I'm thinking that I'm going to bulge this area out, make it um, like more bulbous. So I'll take this. And so this, see how, see how that's still dead round, right? We're good. We're good. So I need that to be round. So here I'm going to push out with this part of the rib here, push out and go down. Woohoo! Yeah, so you see that? And I just will keep doing that, right, to get something more bulbous -y looking, right? Like that. Oh, yeah. Right, so I'm getting really excited about this and how it's looking. At the same time, I am very watchful because as I bulge it out, it does also make the form weaker, right? And it might go oval on me. That's not good, right? So I am also going to maybe push this in, right? So whatever I'm going to do, right, how small I make this lid makes a difference. Meaning, whatever is this going to be used for, if it's going to be used for something goopy, right, that's hard to clean out, you need to be able to probably get your hand in there with a sponge, right? If it's just meant for tea, tea is really easy to clean up. I don't necessarily need to get my hand in. I can just get water in there and slosh it around, right? Does that make sense? But if I'm going to use it for like syrup or something, every once in a while, you've got to clean that stuff out. You probably need something, a hole big enough for you to get your hand in there with something, right? So I got to watch out because I could keep closing this off and make a really small lid, right? Does that make sense? But if I'm going to use it for something where I really need to get my hand in, or you're kind of a neat person, like you really want to get in there and clean your tea out really good, then you want to keep the lid opening bigger or else you have to get a specialized bottle brush or something. So uh, just in case, I'm going to leave it kind of big enough to kind of get most of my hand in. So that means not any smaller than that. And then I'm going to keep pushing this out because this right here, let's get this guy down. This seems a little weak right here. Whoa, this curve right there seems a little weak. That makes sense. Let's turn this up a little. Right, you see how this bulb looks good, nice and healthy and big, but for my aesthetic, this looks a little wimpy. So I'm gonna come back in and push out here. You'll see it here in a minute. For me, I want something, what am I thinking about? I'm thinking about something that has just looks more fuller, right? You see that, oh, that to me looks so much better. And you see, I'm slowly just pushing it out over and over and over. I don't need, I'm not in a big rush. Right. No one's timing me about how fast this takes me. Right. Or anything like that. I'm slowly bulging that out. So you see how that looks symmetrical. And remember when we talked about the other thing, when I was trimming my other pot, I'm always, once again, I'm going to get really low. You guys will see it. I will get my eyeballs down like that. And I, once again, I need to think about, I'm going to trim a little bit more off of here. Right. So it's looking actually pretty good, but maybe you see that it's just a little bit too bulky 
down here, that's good because I'll trim that area back a little, right? Just a little, right? So I'm pretty good, I'm pretty close. And then if you look from the top, it's still round, right? You see that, how it's still very happy. Oops, see how it's still very happy and round. It's not ovalized or anything, I'm in good shape. All right, so I think we're ready. I'm just flattening out this top here a little bit because it does seem a little like I changed a little the dimension. All right, so here we go. So what's gonna happen here? Let's look at this as closely as we can. Let's go big. So let's see what we wanna do here. What's gonna happen here is just take, I'm just gonna draw a false line on here, like just so you can see it. You see how some of the clay is on that side of the line, right? And some of the clay is, there's a line there, and some of the clay is on that side of the line. Everything on that side of the line is going to get pushed down and make my gallery. So here, everything on that side of the line is going to make this. Everything on that side of the line is going to stay up. You'll see that here in a second. That's why you need to leave some thickness here because you need to be able to split the clay in half. Some of it will stay as the rim. Some of it will get pushed down and form your gallery, right? If this is already as thin as just this outside part, you don't have enough clay to make a gallery anymore. You just, you gotta come up with a new plan. Maybe you just make a flange lid, right? Does that make sense? You just go with what the clay is giving you. Um, I should get a, this thing here. I forgot to get my favorite tools out and I need calipers. All right, so here we're about to do that. So how do I do that? Well, you can use your finger, but I want a pretty, for me, I love these kind of squared off galleries like this. So I'll take like a tool here and push that downward just like that to create that gallery. You see where, how the tool seat it's sitting in there, right? And that's what we'll do. And so that's what you'll see here, right? So I want this tool wet. It's easier to run. It is, and my finger, you can do it, but my finger just feels, even if I use my pinky, it feels like I'm using my thumb, right? It just feels too chubby for that sort of action, right? And so here you wet this corner down. And so you see how the rib is not straight up. I tilt it way back. So the clay is going like that through it, right? So it's not vertical. It's tipped back like that. You see that as I'm going into it and I line that corner up with that line. And I just, for a second, it just rides there. And I slowly, see how I'm slowly pushing it down. Now, critical moment here is you still need some strength to do that. Why? Because I'm pushing down on my rim. If this was on the verge of collapse or going crazy, it was just going to collapse or go crazy. That makes sense. It's going to deform under that. So when you throw this, leave a little thickness below, make sure it's not about to collapse or do anything, right? You need some strength here in order to push put some force down here, right? And if you don't, you'll see it all get reflected back into what's happening, right? So keep this wood wet. I wouldn't normally stop there, right? I would keep going. And then you have to think about how far do you wanna go? Well, how far do you wanna go is right. Like you want to go down far enough so that your lid is thick enough Right, so when it seats in there, it makes sense, right? So is that, is there enough depth there for, for my lid to make sense? Because I could have stopped earlier, but then, then that gallery is really shallow, right? And then my lid just doesn't feel good when it's in there. You can also make galleries like this, right? And this is completely appropriate. Look how deep that gallery is compared to that lid, right? The lid actually seats below the gallery, that's fine, right? But you generally, you don't want this big honk and thick lid going up and over. Generally, that's not, doesn't feel good, right? It kind of needs to match up a little bit, right? So I'm thinking about that, but going below is okay. So let's keep pushing it down a little bit lower, right? So I'll just go down just a little bit more. And I use a very, there we go. So I'm feeling good about that. I end up with this little knife edge thing here. So sometimes I can just, there, now depending on how weak this was, sometimes the rim is really wet and goopy. You may not be able to do this. Sometimes you can sponge it back just a little bit. 
like that. And then I want to sponge this off just a little bit. And you see how it's starting to come more in tune with itself, right? You see how this is still round, that it's not ovalized. You see that, how it's still round because you, we are, wheel is only good for, in this case, making round things, right? In this case, I, right? So if I make that perfectly round and I make my lid perfectly round, I'm in good shape, right? If this is oval, there's a million different oval shapes that it could be. And how do I make a, that oval, a lid that's oval that fits? There are ways to do it but we're not going to go that way because that's a little hand buildy right all right so you see how that's starting to look okay i am not going to mess with this anymore what do i mean that that is the last thing i do i don't want to come back and fiddle around with the body some more right because what's going to happen my this gallery is going to go out of round right this is the last thing that i take care of on this part and then all i have left to do is i come through and I undercut it like that, right? And then I scoop this out. Now, I like making these on bats. I never take any pots off the bat that I'm making like this until they're leather hard, right? They're, I don't like the idea of me picking this up and plopping it on another board because the way I used to throw them used to be really thin and any movement I put into it would be, would mess it up. Also, I am conscious, some of you guys know this, right? That these bats warp when you're, when you try to pry them up just from one side, right? You're not taking it off the bat, but you are wiring it. I did wire it, so, cause if you don't wire it, it will crack later, right? So I gotta be careful about even, I am mean, even conscious about cranking on one side of this more than another. Why? It's because that the bat can bow when I pick it up, right? So I'm even conscious about that. So I'll show you what we do about that is I'll get one of these guys here, right? I'll get us these guys. So I'm even conscious about that. Now, do I really need to worry about something this small? Not really, but I will slide this under and like that. See, I'm gently just trying to get it going without being so warpy, right? You see that? If I can, there. So you see that? I'm trying to keep the bat as flat as I can because even that, whoop, will make it ovalize this, this way, right? So that comes off, it's super gentle. Just like before, I keep this guy nearby because I still need to make its partner, right? And I want the partner to match up as best it can. If I put this in the damp room or whatever, I'm in trouble. I won't remember what's going on, right? And then before I take it away, I'll take this guy here. Let's go overhead. I take this. I'm going to take this tool here and just measure inside to inside. So let's let's walk you through the measurement process. So here, pretend I just made that so far. That's where we're at, right? We're going to measure inside to inside there, right? For the gallery space, pretend this was wet. And then when I make my lid, which will be this way, right? I'll measure the outside to outside like that. That makes sense. So that's what I'm getting myself ready for. So here, let's bring this guy back because that's not the correct measurement, right? I go inside to inside there. Whoa, and try not to mark your pot like that. So you see that? And then whoop, when I flip this baby around, it should be perfectly matched up. I know what size my lid needs to be. All right, so this goes over here. Now, the great thing about these lids is that they're very simple. The first one that we're gonna make is this, right? It will just be a simple dome shape, right? And this is like the easiest thing in the world. It's like throwing like a little plate. Let's go sign, here we go. So I just need a little chunk of clay here. Let's see here. So here's my chunk of clay. I just need some, some. Oh, that's plenty, I hope. Right? So I got way too much, and I'll show you what to do. It's always better to have way too much clay because there's a very easy solution if you have too much clay. Here we go. Plop it on, center it. So now, this is a pretty small piece of clay. The rule of thumb is for smaller, for smaller pieces, you can go faster, right? So I can go lickety split now when I'm centering this because it's so small. This is smaller than a cup size. I can just floor it like, 
hold it in minute, right? I can use the non no skills way of centering, right? Because it's hard to center a small piece of clay slowly. So you can really crank it up and go, oh, that's beautiful, right? So now what am I gonna do, right? So this lid, right, needs to be this, this wide here, right? So now I just wanna make this whole mound that wide to squash it down. And you'll see why here in a second. Just squash her down. There we go. So I'm squashing it down. I think I'm about that wide. Let's see now. All right. So, oh no, you see how we're a little bit wider? That's really good, actually, because you see how it's not going all the way down to the back. That's really good because it's actually easier to make this smaller later. So now I'm just going to throw this like a bowl. Do my did my little did my little models make it back? Where'd the wood pieces go? No, I mean I let them out. I let them out to play again. Not those are the those are the flange lid models. Did anybody end up with them? Yeah, those are the ones with flange. Oh, there they are. So pause in the action while those come back because we're going to show you talk about that all right so yes yeah just like that all right so now this is all we're going to do we are just going to throw a plate bowl so it'll be thinner here in the middle and i'll be going getting thicker 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 it's just going to be a solid blob right so here we go solid blob so we go down woohoo, down and then so that is establishing that thinness here right and actually i can go thinner than normal i don't need the everything see it see that little black line there everything on this side of that line gets all trimmed away so i don't even have to leave room for a foot or anything right i can go down farther than i don't need to leave a pinky's width thickness down there so i'm just going down a little bit further i just don't want to go down to the back Let's stab that in. Let's see. Oh, see, it's smaller than Piggy was. I'm cool with that, right? And then now as I go back, as I go back, I'm going to slowly leave more clay behind. I'm going to go upwards, right? Travel upwards, not a flat bowl, right? So as I go back, I'm going to leave more clay, more clay, more clay. So it's thicker here now than it is down there. You see that? And then... Here we go, blah, blah, blah. go up, go up, go up, go up. And then remember when we made flange lids, we saved that clay that was coming up here as our flange. We don't need a flange for this, right? It's just gonna go up and up and up and up. And then I can just fold that clay into the action there. You see that? So there we go. And then, so I just make this like curvature thing, right? You see how it's getting thinnest there and it rises up. That is what we have here. Right, rises up, rises up, and then I just take some time here now to make that beautiful. Because that, when someone looks at my lid and picks it up, that's this surface right here is the part they'll see. So I want to make that nice. So I'm just going to take some time and rib that into a nice, beautiful curve as I can, right. And if I make that into a good curve, then I can trim the opposite side of that curve into the outside because that's the curve that's the curve that people will see later. So take my time, make that all beautiful. Now, I have this, and this is you can already tell right from just looking at this this is bigger and we talked about that right? This is bigger than this. We can even see it here, right? It's a lot bigger. So what are we gonna do? And because John said there was an easy way to fix that. Well, first of all, we always go back and measure, remeasure again, because I set these down. I could have bashed it or something and changed my adjustment. So I check again, right? Oh, it fits, see, oh, it fits really good, right? Oh, I missed it again. And I'm beating this up because I'm having to do it there. See how that fits directly in there, it's perfect. So that means, boom, boom, this side is ready, right? So let's look, oh, you see, oh no, you see how it's way bigger right you guys see that it is way bigger so let's go down let's just lower the sucker down oh my god my hands are all slimy so we're going to see if we can get you guys a better view of what's about to happen right so you see how this one here is too small and it's actually a lot right you see there's a lot right so what i can do though is take this side and i could use one of these sides to make a mark down here on the clay at about where i think it is you see that it's close 
you see that i don't know can you guys even see that mark yeah. right you see that so i use the edge of that i can't use the edge of these because these things just hit the edge here right you guys see that right you see how i can't use those so i flip it around i use that side this one of these sides to make a mark so that mark shows me about how much of this i don't need i'm going to come back over here and reconfirm and we're good and then guess what dun 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 i just take my needle tool like this let's go down from top view and i'm just going to cut down at that mark right and so it's always best to make these lids too big Right, because you see how easy it is for me to just minus that clay, and now, ooh, I, now at least I'm close. Do you guys see that? And then it's super easy. So lids are complicated. There are complicated ways to make lids, and there are simpler ways. I'm trying to make it in a way that's super easy for you guys. Right? Does that make sense? So I'm spending some time just with my sponge, just cleaning up this edge, making it look good right and then now let's come back in there and see right we should be very close now we are closed it's still a little bit too big so we can just let's see if we can just make it a little smaller i don't know we'll just try jamming that in there see if we can just push that up a little right and let's see if it's better now we're so close right you see that how it starts to drop down a little i think we're good so we're good. So normally I would be so nervous that I check again. Like I'd much rather check a million times and get it right than not check a million times and not get it right. So, but I'm not going to, cause it's, a, it's like for me, John is like check six times and start and then before you saw. All right, so now I'm just gonna undercut this cause what is this? This dominess here, like how high this gets domed over, right? How high this sits up and out, right, is only the vertical distance from here, right? So it's only this vertical distance there is what I get to play with, right? So you see that? Like I get to trim out about that much, right? Does that make sense? A verticalness from underneath. That's okay. I'm happy with that. I'm happy. I'm just happy with that. All right, I'm just doing some final adjustments. I'll undercut this a little bit just so that the wire has a place to go. So that's the domey lid, right? Does that make sense? That's just a dome lid. Done. So oh, I'm not as worried about that one warping when I pick it up because it's so small. All right, so let's do the other kind of lid. And that is, that's not a good example. That is this kind of lid here, right? Let's do this kind of lid now, where this kind of lid is thrown right side up. So they're sitting on the wheel this way. This lid, you get a knob all at the same time, right? This was the part against the wheel, okay? And we'll throw one of those, and that looks like this here. Nope, that looks like this here. Bloop, right, you see that? Bloop, all right, so let's do it. So you get to throw the knob and the thing all at the same time, the knob and the lid all at the same time, where the other one, you don't get that. You have to, we have to deal, think about the knob after we trim it. This is way too much clay for this. So we'll just chunk that down. So how much clay do you end up needing? You know, I've never really measured. I just, right, I just kind of have a feel for it. So you just, so I can go really fast because this takes less clay Right, but this is a little bit more tricky, right? That lid is really simple. The concept, you just throw the thing, right? It's kind of like throwing a plate that has a curved at the bottom and then this one's a little bit more tricky. You'll see why here in a second. So you notice that this is much smaller than what I need for my thing. And actually this bottom part here, the width of this needs to be smaller than this opening, the opening part, this from here to there, which it currently is. So I could actually go a little bit bigger, right? Uh, actually, there we go. So that'll work right there. So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna go down off center. So normally when we open, we go straight down into the middle. For this one, we're gonna go down off to the side. You see that how I'm leaving a bunch of clay in the middle, you see that? Why am I doing that? Anybody know why I'm doing that? That's where my knob is going to come from. This part, I just, this, this part is going to be the knob. 
this part out here are gonna be these wings that come off. So I always do the knob first, right? Because the knob ends up so delicate and it's hard for me to come back. So I always do the knob first. So this is actually feels like way too much clay for the knob. So I'm just gonna start shaping the knob. So what do we start? I start by shaping the top of this knob first. So right now I'm working the top end of this, trying to figure out what kind of curve I want, right? I'm starting to collapse it in here, right? It's just like a little centered piece of clay, right? And so I'm still working the top of the knob Knob. You see that working, working, working. So I'm trying to create a beautiful shape here that I think will work. Right, that's looking okay. And now I'm moving down. I'm going to pinch that in a little bit. The, I think that the knob seemed a little wide, so I'm going to pinch it in there a little bit. So you see how I collapse it in. So this is starting to look better, right? So I did the top, the side, I'm working down here. Now I'm starting to go cut under, right? You see that how I'm cutting under like that? When I'm cutting under, I'm watching this part to make sure that that stays level, right? And now I'm gonna really crank under. So I'm gonna really wet this down. I'm really wetting it down. I'm just gonna crank up the wheel speed. See that now? I finish the knob right from the top first because as I begin undercutting here, that connection becomes really fragile. It's very difficult for me to come back in and reshape the top because it'll just start flopping around all over the place, right? So I finish the top and I start working my way down like that. And now I begin undercutting it. Woohoo! There, look at that knob. Woo! So if you want a different shape knob, then this, if you get this far and that isn't it, you just gotta knock it off, but we're just gonna go with that. Okay, so now we got my knob going and now we're gonna throw this right here, here. And I raise this up like a cylinder, but like a bowl. So you see that how I'm throwing that up and out? I'll push in a little bit down here again and I'll throw up and out. So you guys are beginning to see it, right? How this works, right? Then guess what? We just fold that baby down and that becomes this part here, right? So we did the knob that this part here becomes this part here because I fold it down flat, right? Now you can do all sorts of little tricks. Like I could leave it mostly vertical and I could just fold down a part like that if I want to. You guys see that? If you want your lid really hunkering down into there, let's see if that would even work. It's close, right? To kind of working, right? But let's not make that. Let's really hunker this baby out. Let's just flatten it out. You see that how we're really just laying it out. I'm not too excited about that. Let's do it like that. There we go. So we already know that this is getting a little bit hard for me to control. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the same trick as before, right? I could do this and I could use one of these things to draw a line really quickly on there. Oh, that's too far out. That's good. I'd rather have it too far out than too far in. And then I'll just use this to cut that area off. I'm way outside, right? It's still big, right? But that gives me like now it doesn't have to support that weight. So that allows me to now be more, have more freedom here to decide what to do. Cool. Right, Is so once again, this is a lot harder than the other one, meaning the other one's almost impossible to screw up as long as you got your measurements right, because it's not gonna collapse. There is a knob issue here, like ripping the knob off. There is an issue of this collapsing, but you see how it's already pretty close to what I want, right? And I can keep laying it down. Now I'm super close, right? But it's gonna be too big again. So I get to come in here and do this again. I'm very close. You see that how I'm very close there? Right, so you see the way how I'm doing this though is I'm only actually only using one side of these calipers, right? And it could be it's just because I only used to have one set of calipers and this is just the way I taught myself to use the calipers, right, to draw the line, right? So you, can you see the line there that I drew? The line matches up with where it needs to be for the calipers. So then I know that I'm close. Now, whenever you make this cut, it's way better to cut it too big because you can always cut it smaller or trim it smaller. If you make a lid, these lids too small, you can't make them any bigger, right? I can always trim them smaller later, right? If I want to, but let's just go for it, right? And let's do it right now. Right, so that lid is off. So you see, woohoo! Now, I'm just gonna come back in and very gently, Kind of clean that off a little bit. Ooh, I put a little, let's leave that. You see how I made a little bead there? Let's just leave that little bead there. 
just kind of happened. Let me come back and remeasure, make sure at least we're in the neighborhood. Ooh, we made it too small. How did that happen? All right, so this got a little bit too small. We're gonna, so how would I do that? I'm gonna push clay under. I know there's a base here. It just ended up a touch too small. So I'm gonna push this in with my finger. That's gathering me extra clay here. And I'm gonna throw this outward a little bit again. You see that? It was just a little bit too small. So I'm fixing it. Now that's a little bit of an advanced move, what I just did. Let's go back and check again. Right. Oop. There. So now I'm going to trim off a little bit of clay here. And I'll come back and move it out just a little bit. All right. And that's the lid, and then I just wire it off. Do you guys have any questions? Oh, we got them. Oh. Cool. Yeah, so that's lids. That's lids. And then so these I let dry out. I want these to be the same dryness as that. This is a lot less clay than that. So I need to, these to have a tendency to dry out faster. So I have a, usually these dry out quicker and then I might bag these, this one and leave it out. Now, let's do a spout. We have to do spouts. I almost forgot that we got to do spouts. We're going to throw a spout and we'll hand build spouts. Goodness.